So emotions, emotions drive relationship, obviously, and noticing them matters. If they drive it, you need to know what emotions are you evoking to know whether your relationship is working or not working. Not every type of emotion is equally predictive of the health of the relationship, obviously. Not everyone, but there are some, you know, that are, you know, some are more predictive than the other. But the key thing is we want to check between what is positive, what is negative, what kind of vibe is it creating in my relationship? You know, two kinds of emotions stand out, right? Or two kind of um, generators of emotions stand out, you know, when it comes to predicting relationship, the life of a relationship. There are two. One is empathy, affection. Empathy, affection. Empathy, affection. Two, 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 two kinds of emotions or uh, emotion generators, you know, that if you hold on to, you become a master at relationship. You be a master in marriage. Empathy, affection. Empathy, affection. So let's start with the word empathy. What is empathy? Empathy is the ability to get a person. Empathy is the ability to wear the shoe of another person, feel the pain of another person, see things from another person's perspective. So it's at the end, person, person, the, the response that will come from the person is, you get me. You get me. Empathy is to, to, to the end that the other person can say, you get me. You understand me. You heard me. That is being able to wear the shoe of the other person. It's not pity. Empathy is not pity. Pity is dissociative. Empathy is compassion. Pity is mental. It's a mental ascent to a thing. Oh, pity. Oh. <laughs> Look at Empathy is not pitying somebody. Empathy is having compassion for somebody. Empathy is not a mental asset. It's a heart asset. It's a heart asset. Empathy is associative, not dissociative. Pity is dissociative. You don't wear the same shoe as a person. You're seeing the person as separate from you. Empathy, you see the person as a part of you. You feel the pain of the person. You feel the joy of the person. If you want to be a master of relationship, you have to become a master at empathy. Yes, empathy has its own, like every good thing has its own shortfall, right? You, empathy is a tool to be used not a tool to use you. You know, there's a particular personality type. We, if you take away the why, we'll call a particular personality type we call empath. Empath. Empathy without a why is a personality classification. And these are people that feel the energy around them. They are sensitive to the energy around them. They are sensitive to the energy emotion around them and they respond accordingly. But the weakness is that they could become a slave to that energy. They don't know where to say stop. That could be, that could work against you. Yes, it's good to be sensitive to the energy around you. It's good to respond to it. But you must know your limitation because you can't play God in people's life. There's only so much you can do in solving people's problems. You're not here to solve world hunger. That is God's job, not yours. So you need to put your boundary conditions, even in a place of empathy. You need to know the things you can do and the things you cannot do. You must know the things that are within your ability and things you should do and things you should not do. It's good to have empathy. It's good to wear the shoe of other people. But don't play God because you're not God. It will drain you. Your empathy needs to be sustainable. You don't just want to empathize today and not be able to empathize tomorrow. 
You don't want to be dead today and you can't believe tomorrow. Empathy is good. It's good to take to, 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 to wear other people's shoe, but you're not God. So I have no way your boundary conditions are. But in empathy, it will provoke the right vibes in the people around you, your spouse, your friends, your colleagues, your workers. But it must not be limitless because you're not God. Only God can, can solve world hunger. It's not your job to solve world hunger. I hope that helps. So some ways in which we can practice empathy in our daily life, it's one of it is actively listening to people. When you when you when you listen to people, it helps them. You know, it, they, they, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and I'm a counselor, right? I've been a counselor for decades now. Um is and one of the biggest one of the biggest asset tools of a counselor is the ability to listen. Having the answer is not necessarily your counselor does not have to have the answer to everything, no. but you must be able to listen. Because people already know what they want to do when they come to you. They're only coming, coming to, to see if you support it or not. They already concluded what they want to do or not do before they come to you. All they're trying to do is use you as a sounding, sounding, sounding box. They just want to sound you out. Your biggest tool, asset as a counselor, is the ability to listen. Because when you listen effectively, the person can get clarity of thought and get the answer him or herself without needing you. Your biggest asset is being available to listen, not having the answer for the person. But when you listen to someone, that person feels seen, that person feels loved, that person feels heard, that person feels known, that person feels understood, that person feels loved. And it means a lot. It, it, it brings out the, the positive vibes. It generates the right energy. And that person feels connected to you, at home with you. If only you could do that more for your spouse to help your marriage. Women are, are known you know, to want to talk. Sometimes, like we, we get to say, a woman is talking honestly because she wants the answer. So she, she feeds that classical Cancel law engagement. She's talking about a problem just because she wants to talk about it, not because she wants you to solve it. When you're too much in a hurry to give the answer, you kill the moment. You kill the moment. We men need to learn to listen more and not be too much in a hurry to solve the problem because that's what connects us to our spouse. If only we can listen more. Our homes will be better. Not being a hurry to solve your wife. But active listening to others helps generate the positive emotions of empathy. When you use your imagination, it also helps. You know, imagine how the person feels, what the person is going to put you, change, change position. If you were in that person's position and the person is in your position, what would you have the person say to you or do to you? That helps, helps generate the right vibes, right energy, emotion, right? Pay attention to nonverbal cues. You know, someone is talking, but it's not necessarily saying, it's not saying in words everything he or she wants to say, but it's expecting you to read their lips. <laughs> about only about 25% of communication is verbal. You know that. The remaining 75% is non-verbal. This, this is a tested research. What a person sees affects what a person hears, irrespective of what the person is trying to, the person that is talking is saying. What you are hearing me now say is not necessarily all that I'm saying. It is being judged by what you're seeing. What, I'm, what you're seeing, my gesticulation is affecting what you're hearing, which might be different from what I'm saying. 
what people hear is not just what you're saying. They're hearing your gesticulation. They're hearing your 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 uh the spirit behind what you're saying. And what they're hearing might be very different from what you're saying. <laughs> it's tested. I've, I've, I've seen it. I've observed it. I've experienced it. I can be saying out. And people hearing me are hearing him because of my gesticulation. What I'm saying is out. But what people are hearing is in just because of the way I'm gesticulating. What they are seeing is changing what I am saying to fit what they are seeing. It helps in understanding people, but if you're a teacher and you're also someone that's trying to communicate with other people, let there be an alignment with your with what you're saying, trying to communicate, and your 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 gesticulation, your movement. If you're talking, preaching a message about debt and you are laughing, the people are confused. Well, they, they feel you're talking about a party. And what they're hearing is a party, not debt. There are gesticulations that go with certain topic. And when you don't use those gesticulations, the message is not being passed or received. Pay attention to the non-verbal cues because someone can be trying to pass a message that's different from the words that a person is using. And this also works for women also. You know, women are told I are said to be to be too mounted. And I'm not saying this in a way to demean women. You know, that a woman can want something, but they say no. And that confuses men. So much so men tend to abuse women because they think that it's actually the opposite that the woman is saying. Because not all women are like that. But a good percentage of women are like that. She wants to say yes, but she's saying no. Because she wants to look difficult. But it helps. It helps to hear people because sometimes someone wants to tell you something, but that thing is difficult to communicate. And yet she's expecting you to read beyond the words that is being said. So she's not, she wants to tell you yes, but she's saying no, but she expects you to hear the yes because she's saying the no in a way that you are supposed to pick the non verbal cues to hear yes. And when you don't hear it, you are not. You are not. You, you don't have connection. You are not creating the right vibes with the person. So even though the person might want to say yes to you, because but because the vibes you are creating is not right, it might then be the no that you end end up getting at the end of the day. So if you're communicating with somebody, if you want that person to feel heard, seen, and loved, go beyond just hearing the words. Pick the non-verbal cues because there's a whole lot more in those cues than the words you're hearing. It helps in marriage because depending on the personality of your spouse, they might not be the ones that speak so loud. You just say one word, but as a book in that word, if only you're able to pick the non-verbal cues. Staying silent also is important. Not being one that's always talkative. You know, some, sometimes you go to someone that's bereaved. It's not a multitude of words that you have to say that's important to that person. Sometimes all you have to do is just be there. Be there. Be there. Say nothing. Be there. All that person wants is to know that you someone is with them. Not you begin to say, oh, your person has died because God needs it. God needs an angel in heaven. And start saying all of those religious stupid stuff. God needs angel in heaven. Really? So God needs that person more than we that need the person here. Is that supposed to comfort the person or what? Is that supposed to make the person love God more or love God less? If you have nothing uh, tangible to say, just keep quiet. Just keep quiet. You probably generate more, more positive vibes by keeping quiet than saying things, foolish things. So know when to talk, know when not to talk. If you have nothing good to talk, just be there. 
Tell the person, just show the person you love the person enough to be there. Be there. Be there. You don't have to always talk. Your presence says a lot. Ask questions. Seek clarity. When you don't understand, ask questions. Ask questions. Ask quality questions. Don't assume. Assumption is the lowest level of knowledge. Don't assume. If you want to create the right vibes, ask questions. Ask your wife's question. Why are you not always, why, why do I have to be one to always make the move? Ask you, ask questions. Seek clarity. Don't assume. Right? Cool down before responding. Don't be in a hurry to talk. Don't be in a hurry to talk. Don't be in a hurry to answer back. Cool down. <laughs> cool down. Again, use your imagination. As some positions were changed, how would you want to be responded to? Don't be in a hurry. Hurry is of a devil. Hurry is Satan himself. Cool down. Cool down. Cool down. Cool down. Cool down. Cool down. <laughs> cool down. If you want to generate the right vibes, you want to have a good relationship. I'm going to stop here. Uh, past the hour mark. Uh, so the next thing is talking about affection, but we'll move that to next week. So I don't just um, keep you all here for too long. We'll, we'll, we'll key into affection next week, you know, and talking about emotions, creating the right emotions that will help our relationship, our bonding together, our connecting together as in marriage, friendship as a whole. 